everyone, Diane here, welcome to my channel. Um, today we are going to be painting something like this, which is one I did earlier. And um, we've just started the, ja the January Daily Challenge, which is um, Light Out of Darkness is the title I've given it. And already we have done um, fireworks for New Year and we've done cat's eyes. And today I'm going to offer you this lighthouse this is actually a Canadian lighthouse, glowing in the dark. You could put more yellow in there if you wanted to, and on the moon. And um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do now. Um, just wanted to mention the sketch will be available for this if you're not happy about drawing. It'll be available on the website for you, free of charge. And um, you can download that. And while you're there, you might think about signing up for our newsletter which is going to be coming out more regularly and is going to have lots of information in it for you about things that are happening and going to happen. Also, perhaps you might uh, remember to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to the channel on here, which would be great. And uh, to give this um, video a like, if you do like it, I always forget to like what I watch, don't you? And uh, feel guilty about it afterwards. And of course, I'm encouraging everybody to become a member of the channel here or else to become a member on Patreon because you get all sorts of perks, freebies and bits and pieces, which you'll find out about if you go over to patreon.com slash studio. It's all over there for you to see. So let's get started on this. I've already sketched it. I can't see it because it's a, no, no, it's a blank piece of paper. Um, yes, working on uh, Meaden cold press. This is 10 by seven inches. Um, links in the description below the video for for this and I have <coughs> sketched it you may, might not be able to see it but you will see it as I start to paint um, I'm a bit short of time today so I thought I'd better do that and now I need to talk about the paints that I'm going to use um, I've switched from Kuretake for today and I'm going to use tube paints <coughs> because a lot of people some people one person two maybe has said what happened to your little dishes? And like I said before, they've just been hibernating and they've come out of hibernation now. They're gonna go back into hibernation, I think, if the weather carries on like this. Um, but anyway, so what we're going to be using today, if you've got Naples yellow, that's a good one to use for the moonlight and for the rising sun. Um, that's Naples yellow here. Uh, that's one kind of Naples yellow. You can see how pink it is. That's actually quite good for what we want. Some Naples yellows are much yellower than that, but it doesn't really matter. Or you could use buff titanium. This is the Daniel Smith one. Or you could use um, yellow ochre or raw sienna, which are both perfectly good substitutes for um, Naples yellow. In fact, that's what Naples yellow is made from. White plus um, raw sienna or the other one I just said, which I've forgotten. Um, so that's that. Then I'm going to be using a dark brown. You could use burnt umber. This is Van Dyke brown from the old Holland range, but it's pretty much the same as burnt umber. So we're going to use that. We're going to use black, lamp black, and we're going to use um, something like indigo or phthalo blue or something dark blue. We're going to need a tiny bit of dark green. This is, I think, Windsor green and also alizarin crimson. So those are the colors that we need. I'm just going to put out a little bit of this dark brown here. And when you start to paint, if you haven't painted with these ones that you keep out in dishes or on your palette, you might want to wet them a little bit before you start. But to be quite honest, I don't usually do that because then I find I've probably got too much water in the dishes and it gets too diluted. So we don't bother with that. I've also got they don't dry out anyway. They're better made now than they used to be. They used to, but they don't anymore. This is a Meaden um, mixing plate, which we might need, probably will. I've got some bits of credit card here, which I'm going to use for the rocks on this painting. And brushes. This is a size um, seven, I think. Yes, it's a seven round. This one is from Drawwell. Drawwell is a Japanese company. You can get them from the link in the description below if you're interested in buying the brushes that I have been using for many, many, many years. Um, they're not very expensive. They will ship from 
Japan. It's about $30 for the shipping, but the brushes are practically free. Even now that the prices have gone up, they're still very cheap. Um, and here's another one. They have two ranges. This is the Maestro, the black one, and this is the uh, number 11-2, which is the red one. They're both about the same price, not much in it. This is a little bit finer, has a bit of a better point. I like them both. I use them a lot. I'm going to use them today instead of the Crafty Mo ones for reasons which shall remain a secret. Um, okay, so here's my sketch. I'm going to sit down and pray that this rain stops, which I don't think it's going to. Okay, that's a bit better, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Right, for this painting, I'm going to start with the rocks. Uh, I don't know why, why not? I'm going to pick up some black. I'm going to mix it with some brown on my uh, mixing thing here because the rocks are going to start off fairly dark. And I'm just going to very uh, roughly and impulsively just paint in some nice dark here. And after we've done this, we will, um, what's the word, uh, scrape it. That's right, we will scrape it with the credit cards. It doesn't matter exactly how it goes, just make it um, seem to go into the distance like that. Can you see what I've done? Make it smaller as it gets further away. And Leave a few lights if you want, but you can always put them in afterwards using white paint if you if you want to. If you want to increase the amount of snow, I think that's meant to be what I've painted in this other one here, what I've already done, the one I did earlier. Um, the white bits on here are meant to be snow. So having, having done that, then you're going to get your uh, credit card and I cut the corners off so I've got different options for scraping. Um, that one looks like it's breaking. It doesn't really matter. And then we're just gonna come in and scratch away the paint in a loose and random way without worrying too much about details. So just anything like that will do. That's fine. And then we'll forget all about it, ignore it, we're going on to the next thing. Now notice I used the big brush for that. I used the number 14 round for that just to get it done quickly without too much fuss. Um, next thing we're going to need some blue for the C and I'm just going to drop that in on the horizon line so we know where the horizon is and let that come down. I'm not going to touch my rocks because I think they're probably um, still wet a little bit and then we'll just kind of blend that and leave it like that. We'll do the front later. Okay, now the sky. Now, I don't know, you can put the moon anywhere you like and I've drawn it there and there are lots of different ways of doing a moon. Lots of different ways of doing a moon. You could paint it with Naples yellow, and then paint the sky around and let it sort of bleed into the sky a little bit. Or you could just leave it blank and lift it out so it was a white moon. Depends whether you want a yellow moon or a white one. Um, you could use buff titanium as well if you wanted to, or you could mask it out with masking fluid, or you could do several other things. But I think what I'm going to do this time, on the one I did earlier, this one, I just painted around the outside edge, which is why it's got a kind of raggedy sort of look, because um, that was just my trial. But I think for this one, I'm gonna put some um, Naples yellow in there. I'm gonna lift it out a bit and I'm going to let it um, fade away and just put some water around the outside edge. I probably should have rubbed out the pencil because that might show, but never mind. And now the thing to do is the sky. So the sky is going to be dark blue 
I think that's phthalo blue and black, mostly black, a bit of blue. Okay, it doesn't matter what colour you choose. The other one I did, I did with indigo. Um, just need to make sure you can see it all. And then I'm going to, with the larger brush, using plenty of paint. I don't pre-mix my colours. I mix them as I go along because I don't believe in painting anything in one solid colour. So every time I refill my brush, I remix my colours and um, that's the way I do it. So we're coming down round, round the moon. And I will have to put a little bit more water in there to let that learn to glow. Like that. With any luck, I should be able to rub out that um, pencil line or it won't show one or the other, or I'll forget all about it. So we just leave that to sort of glow like that. I'm not going to play with that too much, we leave it like that. And then let's come down here up against the top of the lighthouse. I'll, play, I'll replace that um, aerial or whatever it is that's on the top there later with white. And then put a bit more there. And then I'm just going to make, make it a little lighter as we come down. I'm going behind that bit there. And we've got a tree here that I'm painting behind the tree. And probably the most difficult bit of all is this line here down along the edge of the lighthouse. Try and keep that straight. And this one here, turn it round. Keep that straight. Shouldn't have gone all the way down there because I've got the, sky, the warm sky down there. So I'll put that in now. If I can keep my brush clean. So we'll add a little bit of red to some Naples yellow to make a bit of a pink. We're not really painting a sunset, so we don't need to worry too much about it being super um, golden or anything. You can do whatever happens to happen to you. And now I need to go down behind the back of this tree. It's just pushing some water. I've got a little side little building on the side of the lighthouse there. And we'll just push it all in. We'll get lots of runbacks and things like that because there's water against pigment and that's what happens, but it doesn't really, doesn't really matter, just adds to the, to the mood. And then we want to put some, um, the water, in the front here, which is going to be sort of greyish because it's kind of stormy, you know. So we'll do that, just dash that in. Leaving whites for the reflections and the light. And darken it in the distance there a little bit with a few bits. 
Um, okay, now what we have to do now really is let it dry because we can't put the tree in onto a wet background like that. And yeah, so it's lunchtime, so I'm going to let that dry. Okay, so that's dry now and we've had lunch, so should be able to concentrate, but uh, I doubt it. The rain has stopped, that's something. And I'm going to be picking up here some very light gray, which is a mixture of um, phthalo blue and black. And I'm just painting the shadow areas of the lighthouse and I'm careful to keep the shadow that's on the side away from the moon um, sharp on that point there because these lighthouses are kind of square in shape and uh, therefore they have that line which makes them actually easier to paint I think than the round ones. But then this side is much lighter so that's a first coat and we might find ourselves wanting to put a second layer in to make it darker but we'll do that once it's dry. But just at the top here we'll just uh, put in a little bit more shadow on that area around the bottom there. Um, and here I'm going to just get my white pen and of course you have to always check these things when you pick them up because they usually don't work. And this looks a bit lopsided at the moment but here we're going to draw the railing coming out like that. So that gives a bit more perspective. I'm not going to do anything else, just I wanted to get that in. So you can see through the railing to the other side. And then the next thing that I want to do, because it's fun, I've got some um, cadmium red here, which is a nice bright colour, nice bright scarlet sort of colour. And I'm just going to use that for the the lid of the lighthouse. So we're just painting basically a triangle at the top there. Remembering to keep the perspective lines more or less parallel so that curve echoes that curve and that one as well. Leave a couple of little spaces for reflections of light and then Really, it's going to have to come down here too, so we'll just keep that going. And then maybe if we add a little bit of alizarin crimson, which is a darker red, we can make that red a little bit um, more shadowy. You can come in there. And then perhaps we might have some of the uh, what do you call these, rails or window bars, or I don't know what you would call that, but the bottom part of it is red as well. So I'll just paint that in, in red. Like that. Okay, and we're not going to worry too much about too much in the way of red, but it's nice to have um, an accent colour like that. And what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of white and go over as this kind of bulb thing at the top. I'm going to paint it in white first. And also it has a I expect this is probably a radio mast or something coming up the top. And then your railings coming in here. You can use your end of your brush if you want to do the railings with. Or you can use a white pen. So I'm showing you both. And they both look fine. Um, and then I have to wash that brush off. Down here we've got these windows which are going to also be dark bluish black, or you could make them brownish black, doesn't matter, just as long as it's dark. 
and you can paint them in like that, leaving little white window bars if you want. Or you could just paint them all solid and then afterwards put the window bars in. Either way, you'll probably want to neaten it up with a bit of white. Um, then I think the next thing to do is going to be the trees. And so we'll get some green. This is Windsor green, I think. It really doesn't matter. Thalo green, any of the greens, and mix it with some black. I've got some black here. Lamp black, or you can use your Kuretake colors, no problem. So then we're going to put a nice big tree here. And we're just kind of, just very lightly sketching the trunk, we're not, that's just a guideline. And then at the top, as we all know, the twiggy bits go up and then as you come down, they gradually begin to straighten out and then finally um, lean downwards. So you can either start at the top and go down or you can start at the bottom and go up or you could do both. So maybe I will come down to the bottom here and I'm going to put another few behind here as well. I'm going to have some areas where you've got a little bit more shadow Leave a bit of light as well to pretend that it's snow. Plenty of black, a little bit of green. We all get a little bit nervous when we're trying to do this kind of thing because you want to be relaxed about it, but it's not, not that easy, is it? So anyway, that'll have to do. And then in my original, I had a bit more dark around this area here as if there was some kind of a platform being built there. So we'll just see if we can do something along those lines. Use a bit more of the black as well to make some of the areas of the rocks quite a bit darker. We're up against the lights, right? So just darken it against the lights. Don't paint over the light bits, just paint over the dark bits. And that'll be okay when that's dry. And then we might want to put some, because it's wet along the edge here, so don't paint over the white, but just put a dark black behind the white to indicate where the water is beating up against the rocks. I think we need to take that out a bit further. And that will do. Make the tree a bit more solid in the middle. And then in my original, there was a kind of little building here on the side. Uh, I think I might do it in a sort of pinkish red color. So 
something like that. And then we want some dark green for this here tree. Another one here. Okay. Just vary the heights of the trees. Try not to let your organizer, organizing nature do them all the same height. It's very easy to do that. We'll put some windows on there later. Okie dokie. Now I think we might need to use the pen a little bit. Um, where's my white pen? Hopefully this is dry. I'll just go around those parts of the window and we'll do that there too. Doesn't need to be anything complicated. Maybe we need a little bit more a little bit more dark under here. And we could increase the shadow a bit going down and up. Sort of refinements, it's not absolutely vital. And then I'm going to use a red brush pen because when it gets to the sort of fine details, it's just it's kind of a bit cheating, I suppose. But And then you can make the red a bit darker quite easily using one of these pens. And then I wanted to go over that as well. bit higher. And then you could, if you wanted to, um, with your white, I think I said before, you might want to put some little uh, remnants of snow on these rocks, just thinking of Canada when the snow is melting and you get little pockets of it lying around, of course, or anywhere really. And then we are going to put some white into the sky to be stars or snowflakes, depending on how you feel. So. And do plenty of them. a bit much, we'll take some of that out. Hold your uncle. And there we are. And if you want to, you can sort of do all sorts of twiddly bits by using a small brush. And you can come in here and sort of cut into that to make it a little bit neater if you want to or you can just leave it the way it is and say to yourself, well, that's, that's just an indication of detail. So there we are. And I did say 
we might consider putting some windows or something down here, but I don't think we're going to do very much. Some shadow on the side of the building there. And, oh yes, snow on the tree. Uh, I really don't like doing that. But we do need to. on the tree. And there we are, that is our lighthouse done and dusted. So if you liked that, if you want to give it a go, give us a like and subscribe. Don't forget all the things I said at the beginning. Go back to the beginning and listen again. Save me from having to say it all over again. And there we are. So I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you again soon. So I'll say bye bye for now everybody. Bye bye.